Hello, everyone. I am so excited about today's topic because we're going to talk about my favorite feature of the Profound.js converter, and that is its ability to modularize and componentize your existing code. And if you think about it, this is the holy grail of, of application development. This is where we're all trying to get to, whether it's for new application development or if it's for modernization. We're trying to create uh, reusable code. We're trying to create componentized, highly componentized code. This is what we want. But instead, what we all have are applications that were written some time ago, and this is not the way that it was done. So if you look at an application or, or some code like this, like what's wrong with it? And you can come to the conclusion that there's really you know, not much wrong with what it does. The, the business logic is there to do what the application needs to do. But what's wrong with it is that it's not organized in the way that we want. So first of all, you know, it's fixed format coding because this particular code was written a little while ago and it's harder to read. But even beyond that, there are some issues with it and it's the fact that it's more of a big monolithic program and even though there are sections to it, like right here we're looking at a section that does something specific, this is still in a global scope. This is not a component that can be reused. This is part of a much bigger program. And the Profound.js converter automatically solves this for us. So let's go through this process. So this particular application, it's a green screen application. And of course, that's one of the problems that we're going to solve is that it will become a graphical application, a graphical application uh, that looks like this. Uh, it will also make the, the code better. Um, but beyond that, it's the modularization where you get a lot of the benefits. So if we look at what the benefits are, um, or, or what you get is, first of all, and these are the, the, the points that I consider important. Number one is that when we do this conversion, when we go from RPG to Node.js, we maintain, we fully maintain integrity of the application, meaning that it runs exactly the same as it did before. So we are moving into an open source language, but it's important to note that the way that the application runs, it will run exactly the same. So that's the first point. The second point is that that application is going to be modularized or broken down into separate pieces. And you can see some of these components here on, on the left hand side that we're going to uh, go over. These are the different pieces that, uh, that were broken up and each one of these is its own component now and it's reusable. And the third point is that these components are now web service accessible. So we're going to take a look at that. And the fourth point is that they can also be unit tested. And that's very important because as you're maintaining your application, one little change can have effects in other places and you just want to be able to test every single unit and make sure that there have been no adverse effects. So um, let's take a quick look at uh, you know what, what assets we're getting. So first of all you can see that we've got the original kind of mainline code in a JavaScript file, in a JS file. And we've got the JSON file. That is the green screen DDS converted to HTML5. The JSON file is really best maintained in a visual designer like this. And if we go ahead and open this JSON file, there it is. You can see um, that you know this is the representation of the screen. It's in graphical format. I can point and click and move things around instead of having to code things uh, by hand. So this is one aspect of what the converter uh, gives you. So let's jump back here and let's look at the JS file. So here's the code that it generates and the intention here in this video is not to go over the details of what's in the code. So you'll, you'll notice that it may, it's different syntax now. It's in fact easier to read. You can have more people that understand JavaScript now are able to maintain and read this code. Uh, but what I want to point out is that the code is much shorter than the the program that we converted. So it's only out here, we were only looking at these 67 lines of code because this is just the main line code. And there's a line at the top here that imports all the other uh, functions and injects all the global dependencies into them. So if we look at something like um, a routine called load details, that's the code for it. It's in a separate file, number one. 
But number two is that it is a function of its own. The function has its own scope. The function is reusable. So what's required to call this function is just that you import it and you provide its global dependency. So you can see that we've broken up a big monolithic application into these smaller components that do these individual things. Uh, so let's take a look at how we can use this application. So one of the assets that the Profound.js Converter generates is a web service template that actually uses this component. So we made the you know we um, made the point that the entire thing, or claim 8 RJS, this file functions exactly as the original application did. But now the new functionality is that each one of the components can be called individually. So the web service templates right here uh, are in a separate uh, folder, uh, WS for web services. And if we look specifically at, um, well, let's look at load details again. So this is to call the load details uh, functionality. And so what it has done here in this template is that it sh uh, shows you what the global dependencies are, or actually declares a global dependency. So to call this code, you need you know this particular field, you need this particular database file. It declares those before it imports the load details. So those are actually injected. Uh, the scope is injected into uh, the load details module, and so then it can then they can run. Now, when it generates the template, it leaves some things for you to fill in. So it basically it says, as a web service, what are the input parameters that you want to send to that particular piece of code, and what are the output parameters? And this is, this is a more of a manual step. It's up to you as to how you want to reuse this particular uh, component. So in my case, let's say, uh, let's actually kind of go ahead and do this, and let's say we wanted to take one of the fields that the application uses and we wanted to uh, basically this is the claim number and we wanted to grab that from a parameter that is passed into the web service that we'll call claim ID. So this will be uh, the input parameter and then for output we're going to, so this is going to load the details of that claim, we're going to send out some outputs so let's do, uh, we'll do claim ID, let's do description Um, this would be this particular field, so I'm just kind of matching the fields. We'll do total cost. This is one of the calculated fields uh, within that routine. We'll send that out. And let's do image file. So we're sending out a JSON response that has information that's generated by my routine. So. I've created over here. I finished my uh, fully finished my web service, and as you can see, it took me uh, I don't know less than a minute to create a web service out of something that uh, was originally within a big monolithic program, some logic or routine within a big monolithic program. Uh, so let's go ahead and test this real quick. So I've got this uh, tool called uh, Postman which is just a, a tool to test out web services. And I've already set it up to call out uh, a web service called load details that we have out there. And it's going to send a specific claim ID. So let's see if this uh, works here. Let's go ahead and do a send. And here's the output from that web service. And um, to me, this is fascinating. I want you to realize what we've done here. So we've taken an application uh, you know this application right here where, that has built into it functionality to load up a specific claim. So when we take option five here within the green screen, it loads up the claim and then goes on to show this information. We were able to take that piece of the functionality and componentize it into a web service. And of course, this is now available as a graphical application as well. So the same functionality is available as a graphical application, and we are. Um, you know, we're looking at the same data here, uh, but we can also call this as a web service. And also, please realize that the original RPG code is no longer needed. The, uh, the original DDS code is no longer needed. This is a full transition into open source. This is now operating on Node.js and uh, beyond, you know, 
operating in a graphical environment, everything is componentized as a web service. So we can try and, you know, let's try a different claim number, for example, and we go and click send, and it comes back with information about, uh, you know, that particular claim, the description, the image, the total cost, and of course, these are just the fields that we picked to output in our JSON. We could output as much information as is available within our application. The last thing I want to talk about is unit testing. Unit testing is very important, something that wasn't available to us when the application was a big monolithic program. Uh, but now each one of the units can be tested and as you make changes to your application, if you make any kind of mistake, it's caught right away because we, we have access to unit testing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what I've done here for unit testing. I am using something called Mocha, which is a very popular unit testing platform for Node.js, but really any unit testing system or application or tool can be used. So I'm going to go ahead and run this unit test here, and it's going to go ahead and uh, run the three unit tests that I've set up uh, that are just testing the integrity of the code. It's having some data that it expects, that, you know, that it sends in, and that it expects certain data, and it just makes sure that uh, the tests are passing, data is coming back as expected. Now here's where this comes into play. If I were to go ahead and make changes to the code, so let's go ahead and let, let's just say we're making changes to the code and um, you know we maybe made some kind of mistake, uh, an unintended consequence, and for this particular purpose I'm just going to put uh, you know an extra character into a field. So after having done this, you know before committing this to production we would run our unit test and here's what you would get this this time around. So running the same tests and now, let's scroll up, you'll see that uh, the tests actually are failing. And beyond it failing, it shows you some details. It's just basically saying, this is what I have, but then this is what I expected. Uh, so that's very key. That's very important that you're able to do this. It allows you to be more agile in your approach to maintain your application. So I hope you found this useful and informative. I am very excited about this modularization feature within our Profound.js converter. I know a lot of IBM I companies are super excited about the prospect of automatically modularizing uh, their code, and I hope you're excited about this technology as well.